Granny used to tell me all the time Sparks when fit and preparation combine The road been right here all this time But you gotta look with more than your eyes And the small axe just arrived representing for I just star mindset Rich forever Blessed love Pleasant good afternoon, warm welcome mindset program. I just start my host and I want to greet the item in the divine name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Il Selassie I the first, Empress Menin the first, Holy Emmanuel I, King Selassie I Ja, Rastafari. Warm welcome in those beautiful and divine name one more day above ground beautiful viewers and subscribers as you know life is our ultimate position and we're giving thanks and praise for that all right um we have a, a very powerful powerful reasoning zane for the item um this reasoning was done um in the late 80s Zen by one of Jamaica main stream radio disc jockey and he was interviewing um, the emperor of Ethiopia grandson Zen the honorable the right honorable um, Prince Dawit Mokanin El Selassie. See? Yeah. We have this lineup for the item today, and whatever the item I do right about now, I urge the item that um, the item stop. See? Make the item self comfortable. Get whatever you need to get. See? And thus. Full joy the vibe yeah. Zin. A whole heap of information. And it was Barry G that was interviewing um, uh, the prince. Zin. Yeah, so powerful reasoning. And yeah, full joy. Zin. Full joy. Full joy. Let's go. 1887, in the month of March, we say good afternoon to His Royal Highness. How are you doing today? Fine, how are you? <laughs> how was you, you in your travels, as you hold? Um, in my introduction, I always say His Royal Highness, Prince Dawit. Now, um, <laughs> Prince Charles of England, in the titles, we understand the, the opening lines. Do you, do you carry these titles? Uh, it's not official. The, the titles go, His Royal Highness Prince Dawit Macon. And I was asked in your travels if you do uh, respond to these titles. Sometimes yes and sometimes no, because uh, if I want to get directly to the people, I use just David McCon. Uh -huh. If I want to be officially known, then I use His Royal Highness Prince Dawit Macon. I hear you. Well, many calls, many calls have been coming in, and therefore, with, without even waiting any longer, we clear telephone lines. First of all, uh, 64021. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Good afternoon. Right. Uh, I would like to know... Uh, is it true that... Your radio's a bit too high, but keep going and take it down. Uh, is it true that he is very cruel? Is it true that... He was very... He was a very cruel person. Is it true that Hale Selassie was a very cruel person? Uh-huh. Let me, let me respond that in a different way. You see, in Africa, uh, Ethiopia was one of the strongest independent country, and that was a threat to a lot of con a lot of other continents so therefore people had to put out disinformation to make him look bad but i as his grandson i have never met a man who was as gentle as his imperial majesty are you still there uh -huh. right your question how did you arrive at that question really were you influenced by other things the way you found the question you heard things 
that he was cruel. She heard he was cruel. That, that's uh, most probably, you know, the media, the misinformation, and uh, like I said, you know, the man had uh, the whole continent of Africa unite. He, he had uh, served uh, not only his country but the whole continent. So, you know, there were uh, there were a lot of threats for. I won't put color on, but uh, there was a lot of threats. Another uh, continent that uh, they felt by putting misinformation, by putting information out there to let him look bad, like a monster. That they could uh, get rid of him. And they uh, tried and they, they succeeded. <laughs> uh, any other question relating to the line you've taken, lady? Um, is Hilton Acid dead or is he alive? Um, you know, do you hear anything about anything else about him? Is he alive or what? Well, as far as I know, uh, there is no proof to that he, that, that he is dead. Mm -hmm. They say that he is dead. Now, the best proof uh, to me is if, if, they, if they have a body that, you know, that they have killed or whatever, they should show it to the people. And there is no better proof than a dead body. But there is no proof that he's dead. That's right. Are you still there? Yeah. All right. Uh, any other question? Uh, I don't. I can't think of any now. <laughs> uh huh. Uh, well, keep it going, and if other questions come by your mind, you know the number six. And somebody else wants to ask a, a question. Hold on. All right. Saying good afternoon to His Royal Highness, Prince Dawit Makanen, who is our special guest for the afternoon. I thought it was opportune that we have His Royal Highness in studio to share the many answers to the many questions you've been asking. No doubt it has formed debate over all these years, 13 years to be exact. Uh, His Royal Highness was last here, wasn't it? When you were seven years old. That's right. You've been here since? Since uh, 1966. No, that was the last visit. Right. His last visit was with His Imperial Majesty in 1966, April of 1966. And uh, he's gracing the shores of Jamaica for the first time since. Uh, someone else wanted to ask a question, right? Hello. Mm-hmm. That his children bleed in their blood. Go again. <laughs> it's true that his grandfather did not kill virgin bleed in their blood. Is it true that his Grand grandfather, his his grand, go again. His grandfather, I mean, that is Celestia, usually kill virgin and bleed in their blood. Is it, you heard the question? Yes, I heard the question. Uh, and again, I can only say, look, if you have a strong principle and if you believe in something, people are obviously going to come in and try to destroy it. And this is the best way of doing it. You know, making people believe the other way. Okay, so I can only say I have been very close to him. I've never seen him even killing a fly. So you take your own judgment. Are you still there? Yeah. Well, you've been doing a lot of reading. I mean, the, His Imperial Majesty killed virgins and bathed in their blood. <laughs> you heard that one? Yes, I've heard. I've heard a lot more. Children killed, uh, and he would bathe in, the, in their blood, and all sorts of uh, different different versions of that story. But <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> But, uh, again, like I said, you know, if you have a very strong principle, okay, that you believe in, there's bound to be a lot of people who are going to try to, to destroy that. And uh, you just have to be strong and believe not from the evil that is uh, trying to, to get you the other way. Mm. What sort of mood the emperor had? Uh, between himself and the people, what sort of interaction? Uh, because you grew up with him, you even came to Jamaica with him. How do the people react to him in his movement within the countryside and generally throughout the country? All right, uh, let me uh, tell you some of the things that has happened. For example, the people who are in power today, 
he was, you know, personally, uh, he was the one who had them educated. Uh, in Ethiopia, we regard His Majesty as our father, okay? And he was, throughout his reign in Ethiopia, throughout the reign in Africa, he was regarded as a father, okay? So, to me, you know, like I said, the continent of Africa is a very powerful one. Mm. And was it in the same way as Gandhi is to India? That kind of... Much more powerful. Uh -huh. Much more powerful. You know, uh, there are so many tribes and so many races in Ethiopia, okay? He was the one who created the organization of African unity. And let's not forget the wars that, that happened during, uh, the, uh, during the reign of His Majesty were much less than they are today. Because in every you know continent if there is no leader the chaos happens that the the philosophy that he talked about in 1964 okay that was a philosophy then today it's a reality as long as we are second-class citizens okay we will always be at war so you see, the, the, I, I call it white man. The white man is trying to tell us that, or trying to divide us and say, you don't have a power, we've got to control you. So look at what is happening in South Africa. Do you think the exceeding power which he had and the kind of respect he commanded, do you think this bothered uh, some people? Well, you mentioned the white man, generalizing. Right. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, like I said before, you know, Ethiopia was one of the most independent country in, in Africa, okay? That bothered, uh, we didn't just, we weren't only independent for ourselves, but His Majesty went out and said, my mission is to make all Africa independent, okay? Since his time, since 1916 when he became regent to 1974, just imagine how many countries became independent from colonies, okay? And that was his work, okay? Now that he's not amongst us, okay, look at what is happening in Africa. There's the feeling that in any society where there are blacks, if a black person rises up to a level where he's respected, he commands a following, he, he's threatened. Uh, do you see it in the same way? Uh, in North America, for example, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had a strong following. He taught blacks uh, philosophies and in particular when he spoke of nonviolence and he wasn't preaching hate white. Um, is it based on how you see it is it is it a general feeling then that whenever there's a black person who commands leadership who commands power this will always happen to such a person i look at it at my you know with my grandfather in 1935 the ethiopian people for example when they were invaded by the italians okay he did not ask people to get their arms and fight the italians he fought them in the league of nations which later on became the united nations okay and and he preached all the time of nonviolence. Okay, and from a line of Judah, you don't expect that, or people did not expect that, but he did because he had a great vision, and that vision has to continue. We can't, you know, kill. Killing is not going to get us the end result. We have to do something that is much higher. Than, than those killers. The calls are coming in, we need to get to that point. As, as a matter of fact, um, the title, Lion of Judah, the fact that you were so close to him, I'd love to find out uh, his own perception of such titles and being head of that throne. We'll get to that. This afternoon, and saying, well, you said so, what, what you didn't say, right? That, that's right. Uh, you know, I, I just want to make clear, you know, if I, I did not put color on, on, on Jesus Christ, I'm just simply saying, if the white man says that Jesus Christ is blonde, white-skinned, blue-eyed, why not if a, a black man says he's black? But I am not categorizing Jesus Christ as black or white. Do you understand what I And I think, you know, like His Majesty said, religion is a personal thing, okay? It's, uh, and therefore it should be personal. But, uh, and, and country is for the mass, you know, to discuss about country. So I, I hope that nobody out there has misconceived 
uh, what I said. <laughs> Any response to what you heard? Because here we are in Jamaica, sharing with our listeners happenings in the black world, achievements which have been neglected, and interestingly, many books didn't carry for reasons ABC. But here we are on this program, Black Tracks, sharing the achievements of blacks. You know, Barry, th this is what we have to be proud of, not, you know, the importation of uh, uh, Russian uh, ideologies and um, American ideologies, but the ideology of the black man, you know, Marcus Garvey, uh, Haile Selassie, you know, uh, the Queen of Sheba. Those are our proud uh, his historical backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And so let's stick to that. Mm -hmm. I was sharing with you the point before, and I'm going to rephrase, there's the feeling in many quarters that uh, any black who has risen to a level where he has a command of people, we've discovered over the years that that person has always had a fight to the point where even his own blacks are beginning to question that person's convictions, ideals, and even the kind of propaganda which even lead to the level of confusion. Here in Jamaica, for example, the things said about Marcus Garvey, only today that many things are being corrected. We have a situation where in the United States they have given an award of pardon for something they did, which they're now discovering that the way they saw Marcus Garvey, it wasn't so. Um, and I was pointing out before, if you do see it the same way, that blacks in all walks of life, when they, get, when they have leadership quality, when they share with their people, the love of self and development of the black race, if they do get that fight generally, do you see it that way? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the thing I, I believe is uh, the leaders have a conviction, have a, 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 a vision, okay? And if we deny them that vision, okay, we are the ones who are weak, okay? And we should not let our enemies penetrate through us. Okay. Now, for example, the Rastafarian movement, it is one of the strongest movements and I really, you know, I see them a very strong organization and a, a very powerful one. Are you? But, but they have to stick to it. Hmm. Are you a Rastaman? I am a Rastaman. If I, if I said I'm not a Rastaman, I would be denying myself. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, who, you know, who, who is the Rasta man? Uh, the Rasta man is the black man. Hold on, let's find out. Okay. Six for to one. You still there, lady? Yeah. Uh, oh, you heard the chit chat a while ago. Uh -huh. What are you saying? I was asking, um, what does he think of the Rastafarians on a whole and um, their idea of worshipping him? Their idea of worshipping your grandfather. Yeah. All right. I'll say this. Uh, first of all, the Rasta man is a strong African man okay who has his beliefs now the white man makes jesus christ blue eyes white color and blonde hair I'll tell you something yeah. right. <laughs> no I, I i i i deliberately i deliberately share the physical mm -hmm. because something happens in our society from time to time <laughs> values and outlook I'm, I'm i'm describing you are you there lady yeah he sports a mustache right thick eyebrows he keeps his hair low. Yeah, I saw him on the television. You saw him on the television. Yeah. Only two strands of gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you saw him on the television. Yeah. Right. And I asked him if he was a rasta man. Uh -huh. he, right. Your reflection? Uh, so why doesn't he believe in the locks that as the rasta farms out here in Jamaica? <laughs> Why you don't believe in the locks as the Rastas here in Jamaica? Well, uh, you know, uh, it's not the looks that makes the Rasta man, okay? It's the idea that makes the Rasta man, mm -hmm. okay? It's not just because, for example, I wear uh, European clothes. Mm -hmm. Does that make me European? Okay. It's the inside, the inside that tells you what you are. And I basically believe that I am a Rasta man. <laughs> Not the looks make me a Rasta man. Mm -hmm. What about the tying in with the same line of question? What about the, the beliefs and the values of the Rasta man? Uh, for example, she was pointing out uh, there's this very deep sense of respect and regard for your grandfather as the descendant, as the one. Um, some say God. As a matter of fact, the, the, the 
the word, the sound, the power. Word, sound, and power is Ja Rastafari. Okay, let me uh, comment on that. Uh, if you remember, his one of his titles is Elect of God. Now, he was Elect of God. If it wasn't God that gave him that power, he would have not ruled even one man. Okay, so I believe that the elect of God meant what it means. Okay, so I, there's nothing wrong, you know, with being an, uh, you know, an African, uh, having an African idea. And he had an African idea. Tell us a little about the titles which have been passed on through the ages. The Lion of Judah, Elect of God, God right. uh, the um, Conquering Lion of the Tribe of uh, Judah. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, he uh, added to that, you know, the, the, the um, uh, um, conquering line of uh, the tribe of Judah. Okay. I believe that he had a vision that the promised land was Ethiopia. Okay. There are, for example, the Falashas. Uh, you might have not heard about them, but the Falashas, you know, during Moses' time, went to Ethiopia. They did not go to Israel. Israel for them was Ethiopia. Today they are in Israel and they cannot get along with the the, the so-called Jews in, in Israel. So there are a lot of things that we have to explore and find out for ourselves. You know, and people find out if they are strong. Okay, but if they have weaknesses, you know, to the, all the temptations that we've been given, then we'll lose the vision. Thank you very much for calling, lady. Okay. And hopefully other calls will bring out what may have been in your mind but didn't reach airwise, right? Okay. Thank you very much. Amen. Still the um, I need to get my pronunciations and spellings right. right. Very important. Okay. I made one of the biggest blunders the other day. Um, <laughs> I, I remember saying... I'm I'm right. Right. There are many names hitting my head, right? Um, your last name. All right. How my last... Uh, all right. We pronounce McConnell. McConnell, that... The, my father's name was Prince McConnell. Okay, he was the second son of His Majesty, right. who died in a car accident. But uh, he was one of his uh, favorite sons and died very early because he had also the same visions as my grandfather. Mm. What happened then, I presume, since your father died so early, um, he was the son of His Imperial Majesty, you being his grandson. Uh, you were more like a son to... His Imperial Majesty. Yes, uh, you see, after he died, actually before even he died, you know, after I was, uh, I finished uh, milking, <laughs> uh, I was uh, taken, you know, all five of us was taken by His Majesty to, to the palace, and he brought us up himself. Mm. And, uh, you see, the, the conviction that he had and that he gave on to us was such a strong one that you can't abandon it. Now, on the question, you know, earlier on, dead is his majesty dead you know like i said i don't have any proof of his death but one thing i i, I do know that is that his spirit is so strong that people will carry it for centuries to come mm. you were pointing out that since the the news you were pointing out that since the news of his death uh you haven't been to ethiopia but you've been in close contact with members of the family uh, have they been able to, to trace have you asked them the same questions which you know and, and the kinds of talk which is rampant in the West uh, have you been able to discuss these things with them with uh, with your relatives yes uh, you know uh, let me uh, comment on on the relatives in jail mm -hmm. you know one of the uh, you know, they've been held for 13 years without any kind of uh, um, charge. Uh, charge. Mm -hmm. So every time I get, you know, a letter from from my brothers and from my mother, is that remember the principles, okay, which gave them the strength to this day. You know, for them, the imprisonment is a temporary uh, thing. They know, for example, that they're coming out alive. All right. And for them to know that, they must have had something strong with inside to feel that comfortable. Are, are you afraid to go back? I'm not afraid. I, I was afraid earlier on. But l everything has its time, you know. And the 13 years was time to grow up. 
to reason to to get mature okay time has come i i gave earlier on uh, an interview saying you know they said when are you going to go back and i said in two and a half years 1990 is the the, the promised date so i know that i'm going to be in ethiopia in 1990 and those who want to go back mm. no doubt some people will be saying oh you're a coward since the military has taken over and they are um harassing the family of his imperial majesty um you won't face the music so to speak some music right <laughs> let, let, let me say this uh the um, you know uh, cowardness is if you don't fulfill your mission but your mission has to have a time okay and it has its maturity until the time comes you can't do anything okay now the time has come and it does not come you know like you know you're told the date or something it is within inside you that burns and says this is it mm. go for it you know and i feel that the, the mission that i have is that in this two and a half years uh, i've got to make things happen and the power will be with me in yes. prince dawit mcconnell who is grandson to his imperial majesty he last visited jamaica with emperor haile selassie in 1966 april you remember that scene at the airport yeah. right what's your question this afternoon uh, all i like to know is this um when he came here in 1966, right? I went around, but my grandma told me that when his Imperial Majesty Elena Selassie died, yeah. and I was a pain, I saw the Rastaman, he wept. Your grandmother told you that when his Imperial Majesty landed in 1966 and he saw the Rastas, yeah. he wept. Yeah. Uh, do you remember? You were seven years old at the time. Yeah, yes. Uh, uh, he's, uh, well, what's your question? Yeah, I want to know if, he, if, if, if that was true. Let, let me uh, answer that and say, we, uh, let me describe you. Uh, we came from Trinidad and Tobago uh -huh. and uh, landed, uh, I was at DC-6. We landed and, uh, you know, every time my grandfather goes to the cockpit during landing and takeoff. Uh -huh. So I went along with him and we landed and we were going to the, towards the terminal when suddenly this whole crowd came towards the plane uh -huh. so he ordered the, the the engines to be shut off now what happened if he wept during that time i didn't see it clearly okay it could have happened uh -huh. all right but it was something very moving you know that uh, uh, it was I, i can't describe it in words you know but it was very powerful you know Uh, any other questions, sir? No, I don't want to. This is all you want to know. How old were you at that time? Yeah. Uh -huh. I wasn't around. You weren't born? No. <laughs> is your grandmother there? No. All right. Great. Thanks for calling. All right. Okay. And uh, no doubt others will be asking questions. And um, if anything comes to mind, make certain. 6421. Uh -huh. Hold on. I'm going to like to ask the questions. Right. <laughs> Right. Yes, sir. It seems that Rastaman is all right. It's a suit, basically. Herb, right? Dunja, right? Uh-huh. So, uh, what well, I would like to ask the prince, first of all, if he can support Dunja, then. He says the Ganja is closely associated. <laughs> the Ganja is closely associated with the Rastaman. The Rastaman. But that's not the reason why. And you said you're a Rastaman. Do you smoke Ganja? Yeah. Would I be a Rastaman? Yeah. If I didn't? Yeah. He's asking if he wouldn't be a Rastaman if he didn't. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He says yes. You answered the question. Yeah. You answered the question. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you, 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 heard, you, you heard the answer? Talk to him. He's listening to you. I didn't hear that. Oh, st start your question again. Yeah, he right? And the rest of the right? All right, well, that's the principle of the system. And the reason why I got that up to the city. Ganja is associated with the Rasta man. You say you're a Rasta. Do you smoke Ganja? <laughs> I, I guess I answered that question. Uh, you, you heard the answer? Um, huh? Yeah, I would heard it. I want to tell you. 
You want to hear it again? Okay. The, you, he said the, the Rasta man smokes ganja. So if I'm a Rasta man, what would be the answer? You're asking, he's listening, uh huh? You're saying that you don't smoke then. Uh, <laughs> perhaps if you had to explain. Oh, by the way, I must share with you. Um, possession of ganja uh -huh. in Jamaica. Uh -huh. I need to ask you about that too. Right. Possession of ganja is illegal mm -hmm. according to the laws of the land. Mm -hmm. Possession of ganja. Uh, we have, interestingly, you should be here at this point because I shared something on the radio which is posing a problem. Uh, in India, opium is not seen as a drug because in the in the um in the tribal um, celebrations when there's a birthday when there's a fight in different regions the way to um, make up so to speak is to share opium heroin is considered a drug now that's their culture here in Jamaica for a lot of Jamaicans and it must be a problem in taking decisions I believe it um, a lot of people smoke ganja Many people do not see it as a drug. Right. It'd be nice if a survey is done scientifically to find out how the society generally feels about it. Well, but the law still states possession of ganja is legal. Right. But let me ask you this: uh, in the uh, democratic rights of a of a person, he has the right to pursue his religious beliefs. Right. There so you go. If, right. if Rasta believes in ganja, and if somebody says that it's uh, illegal, he's really denying him his right which is, you know, to pursue his religious beliefs. Peter Tosh shared the same point with me. People thought he was frivolous. He pointed out that in the United Nations, when you look at all the points involved, he brought up that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't want to be a judge, but, uh, you know, it's part of the Rasta belief. Okay, so... If if you take one thing out, mm -hmm. you take uh, the whole Rasta man out. Are you still there on 6th Road, Udo, sir? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you do know that many Jamaicans see a Rasta man as locks and the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. But he doesn't, but that doesn't make him uh, not a Rasta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he's a, he has answered my question. All right. Thank you very much, sir. I'm trying to, try to remember a question. You want, you, want to, you want to put a question together and ask him? Right, you you ready for it? I can ask you one now. Right, go ahead. Yeah. Do you? How long will you be in Jamaica? <laughs> I wish I could be here for good, but uh, I am staying another week. You are from Ethiopia? Yes, I see. You like him very much out here. Absolutely. You're taking over the super mix. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got some fresh plastic from Troja. Oh, what's your name, sir? Brumfield. Brumfield. When next I go on holidays? Uh huh. Um, I'd like to ask the prince to briefly trace the line from which the emperor is coming. Ah. She wants you to trace the line from which the emperor is coming. As a matter of fact, I'd, I'd love for him having traced the line to end up at his position, <laughs> whether he's next to the throne. <laughs> right. All right. The uh, crown that, uh, as you know, goes back all the way to King David, but mm -hmm. let's keep it a little bit lower. Uh, King Sahala Selassie was the uh, line that his majesty came from. He is his great great grandfather okay and that then ended up in Milalik the second who was at the time just the uh, emperor uh, the king of Shoa and then became the emperor of Ethiopia and his majesty was the first king of kings in other words there was no other king during his majesty's time whereas during Minilik's time there was uh, the king of uh, Wollo and before that the king of uh, Tigray so for the first time uh, and so it went on now let me tell you something the crown never went from father to son. The crown never went from father to son? Never went from father to son. It skipped most of the time. And that's why the elect of God. Okay. You have to be elect of God in order to, to be in that position. So, who knows who's the next emperor going to be? Let, let me ask you, uh, for the benefit of our listeners, uh, 
King Selassie, he took over from uh, Zodito, who was uh, the queen at the time. Right. How did King Selassie get there? Well, you see, all right. I had to ask the question. All right, wait. Menelik uh, the second nominated his grandson to become the uh, king, the next emperor of Ethiopia. But it was Haile Selassie who was more popular by his people. Uh, and that's how, you know, he became elected, uh, or not elected by the people, but by God, that he took the position and became emperor. So he, um, did, like I said, it skipped all the time. Uh, if you were still in Ethiopia at this moment, and uh, King Selassie was on the throne, he could have passed it on to you. Yes, he could have passed it on to anybody that he felt that to that position. Within the family? That's right. Yes. He, he has, he is the ultimate power. So he pass, passes it on to whoever he feels he uh, is next uh, in line. Okay. Uh, yes, lady, uh, you got those answers? Yes, um, another question. Um, what do you have to say about the belief that uh, the emperor is the Christ? Your reflections on the belief that the emperor is the Christ. I, I, I thought I answered that earlier. Uh, no, did, did you miss the answer before? Yes, I did. Uh -huh. Okay, all right. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the white man says that Jesus Christ is white, blue eyes, and blonde hair. The black man says it's is Emperor Hylas Lassie. I don't see anything wrong with that. But on, on what is this belief based? On the Bible. On what is the belief that the Emperor is the Christ based? On what is the belief based that the Emperor is the Christ? In, in, in the same way that you, uh, you, you're saying the white man sees Jesus yeah. as the Christ, mm -hmm. as Son of God, you're saying the black man sees Celestia. Yeah. The first one that crowns himself as King of Kings, the uh, uh, Emperor and uh, Conquering Line of the Tribe of Judah. Mm -hmm. It says in the Bible that, that he will be a King of Kings and will uh, get uh, freedom for those who are in chain. So that way, why not uh, Emperor Islas did the same thing? Uh, he did slave, uh, he did free the slaves in Ethiopia. He was the first emperor to, to, to speak out against slavery in the whole world. And the unification. Right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and most of the things that he did. So I don't see anything wrong with that. Mm -hmm. so some people would actually call the talk programs tomorrow and say, um, you're blasphemous. Well, I could say the same thing to them. Uh, there, there, there's something... Is, I'm going to bring out this point some more. I said on the show one day, um, I don't have a problem with color, okay? I'm black, but I don't have a problem with color. I said on the show one day, um, if Jamaicans realize how many pictures they have in their homes of Jesus as a white man with hippie type hair, wearing a robe, barefooted or in sandals, um, white. I asked the question one afternoon. Some people thought I was causing trouble. I did ask the question, many of you will remember. Um, I pointed out that there are many grandparents, for example, not so much with the young people. They have a picture in their home and they say, that's Jesus, they, they, they even bow to it on their calendars, a blue-eyed guy, blonde hair, long hippie-type hair, with a gown, beard, mustache. And I even pointed out, it's ironic how people look on those who wear beard in this country and mustache and say, you're a ragamuffin or you're rough. And the Jesus they have on their picture, on their calendar, is heavily bearded, in a gown, in sandal, and the blue eyes you speak of, and the rest of it. <laughs> I, that's why, you know, I'm saying what, you know, they're, they're saying that Jesus Christ was white, okay? And 
the black man is saying Jesus Christ was black and is seeing it in, in, in uh, Emperor Hylas Lasse. So I'm saying, what is wrong with that? <laughs> uh, you there, lady? Yes, yes, sorry. Um, another question is... Um, hey, hold, hold it. They said that uh, he was he was sick, that he had an operation, and after the operation that he died. But uh, again, uh, they said it's a hearsay, so we don't have any any kind of proof of of where, whether he's dead or he's disappeared. When you heard of his um, alleged <laughs> sickness, um, where were you? I was in uh, Europe at the time. I was in Italy. Mm. Uh, how you heard about it? Over the radio. You, heard, you, you were the yeah. grandson, and you heard. Yeah. That you, you heard your grandfather was sick. All right. You see, during seven, between '74 and '76, I had a problem of communication back to Ethiopia because you know I was one of the most wanted people uh, in my country. So I couldn't, I, I didn't know who to trust and who, who, to tr uh, who not to trust. So until I got my communication back, I was only hearing things, but uh, I didn't, you know, nobody told me of facts. Okay, so I, I got it from the media. Mm. Yes, lady. Um, so where was the emperor at this time? He was in the palace. Mm -hmm. All this time, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so um, no close relatives of the emperor have nothing more substantial to say on whether he's dead or not? That's correct. You see, uh, his majesty was deposed in the palace. Was, was? Was deposed, was deposed in the palace. Uh -uh. Whereas his family was put in jail, in the, you know, uh, uh -huh. jail. Mm -hmm. So there was no communication to... Uh, between the, the 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 families. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh huh. Um, I have uh, two questions. One a little uh, personal. Uh, does he speak Italian fluently? Un po. Ah. <laughs> You're calling from Buff Bay, right? Yes. I, I must tell you about this listener. Uh -huh. I just heard the voice, and I can tell you, um, a very bright Jamaican student. You you studied in uh, in Poland, right? In Poland, I studied. She studied in Poland, and she spent a number of years there. She came home before that explosion. Ah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, right, with the Russians, and uh, right. So he does speak a little Italian. 1950, 51, I think, when Eritrea was federated in, um, into Ethiopia, they have been, uh, or some Eritreans have been protesting, they want to be a separate nation, they want to have an Eritrean state. What is, um, or what was the emperor's relation to that question, and how do you feel about the whole question of the Eritreans? See, that's one of the things that, uh, you know, divides uh, most of the African countries, these separatist movements. I feel, you know, just like the emperor, that you can control your own destiny, but you have to be under one nation. Okay, and that's basically what what he said. Okay, and the Eritreans are saying, no, we don't belong, to, literally, they don't belong to the Ethiopian, uh, that culture, tradition, religion, and all these questions that had nothing to do with Ethiopia, which is, if you take it, if you look at the uh, Eritrean history, throughout, they've been, you know, it was always, uh, they had the same traditions as uh, other Ethiopians, they've had the same cultures, they look the same <laughs> and everything. But now the influence is like, if we became part of the Arab world, we would be much better off. Okay, so there is that influence of uh, an outside influence. But if you ask the average Eritrean, I don't think he wants to be separated from Ethiopia. Uh, you, you met those outside of Ethiopia? 
Yes, I met them while I was studying in Poland. And they, well, I would not agree that they look, uh, they look like Ethiopians. I saw a sort of um, different physical and facial features. For example, Ethiopians, the eyes. Once you see an Ethiopian, the eyes stand out. The, the shape of the face, the and nose. And the ears. Yes, and the Eritreans, <laughs> they were sort of... Um, more like the Arabs, more I think, more Arab influence in 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 their in their um in their whole physical look rather than the Ethiopians who I think maybe uh, more closely to the Sudanese. That's very good. That's my opinion. <laughs> All right, uh, number one, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, my mother is Eritrean, so I feel part of Eritrea. <laughs> okay, so isn't that interesting? Uh, uh, I, I consider myself Ethiopian, uh, but anyhow, no. Throughout the history of Eritrea, Eritrea has been always colonized by either you know the Turks, the Portuguese, or the Italians, or the British. It was Ethiopia that freed Eritrea from all those colonies. Uh, okay, so billions that uh, uh, you know a blown up number. Mm -hmm. Number two. If a man believed in his country and worked for 58 years, why would he stash it away? And why didn't he, you know, quit before it became unhealthy for him? Okay. His Majesty, when he had the opportunity, he went out to the African Unity meeting in Somalia. And the military had already taken over. They sent him the plane and told him, continue on because if you come back you are going to be deposed and he said whatever you know i have served my country and if it is if it serves the purpose of my country for me to be deposed then let it be it if a, if, if a man did did um, possess wealth outside of the country and he realized he was in danger and while the military took over when he was out why go back in exactly you know that's that's the question that people don't don't ask uh, a lot of times you know media puts out certain things and it's very difficult to counter to counter it but i believe you know uh, his majesty you know he worked his life for his people okay in ethiopia there was a a, a wise man when uh, he said uh, when the military you know they had two campaigns one outside for, for you know the, the europeans and one inside the country and they had said that he had stolen billions of dollars and the people said is it sufficient? Can we give him more? Okay? <laughs> that was their response. But in Europe, it was like that thief. Oh, okay? Because the, the people you. know Mindset. what he has Mindset. done for them. Okay? And they felt that it was not enough. Hmm. But uh, I'm just trying to make a point saying that in the eyes of the Ethiopian people, whatever, if, it, if, if, it, that, if that was a fact, that they were happy about it. Hmm. My caller from Buff Bay, in response to that... Uh, Answer? Uh, no, I was just thinking about uh, 1985 when we, when there was this um, thing in the media about Ethiopia starving, raising money for those um, people in Ethiopia. I was just wondering the, um, what were his, his, his feelings? Did he make any contribution? Did he buy, for example, um, the USA for Africa record? Or I mean, what was the general response to the whole situation at that time? Of, I don't know, is, she's asking me about my feelings. Yes, I'm asking you about your um, your reactions to the whole problem of starvation in um, in Ethiopia and the whole um, worldwide support for those. The feeling was, if I may. Uh, relate your question. The feeling was that people were starving and the emperor wasn't doing enough. In to, 74, you mean? Uh, not in right. In 74. Before and, and leading up to the present situation, because I think this whole problem of starvation just wasn't overnight. I, I think it probably was um, as, as a result of, of, of something which was ongoing, drought and so on. And that the emperor had a lot of wealth and the dollar wasn't circulating, so to speak, right? We'll pick up led to that people were starving in Ethiopia. People were starving in Ethiopia while the emperor was wealthy and that life for the people in Ethiopia was at a low ebb. However, the reports were that the emperor was living, oh boy, 
Prince. Oh, all right. Uh, <laughs> first of all, it's a total lie because I was there in 1974 and all his ministers reported to him that there was no starvation in Wello. He insisted of going to Wello and finding out for himself. But when he went there, it was late. Okay, and the whole world had already blamed him. Now, the way that they showed, you know, the world law uh, controversy is they took all the starving people, okay, while he wasn't aware of, of the starvation, okay. Then his day-to-day -day routine, okay, feeding animals and so forth, and took that and put the two pictures together so that he'd look bad, okay? But he wasn't aware of what was happening. Then. How, how did he govern? It may be good for you to explain how he governed in terms of the ministers and who was responsible for what, and how answerable they were to him, All right. bearing in mind this issue. All right, there were governors, and there was a department of uh, you know, agriculture, health, and welfare. The uh, governor did not report to him that uh, he was, that, that one law was had a, a drought and that starvation was at, on, a, on the doorstep. Uh, second of all, the ministers, the cabinet... ...he governed in terms of the ministers and who was responsible for what and how answerable they were to him, all right. bearing in mind this issue. All right, there were governors and there was a department of uh, you know, agriculture, health and welfare. The uh, governor did not report to him that uh, he was, that, that one law was, had a, a drought and that starvation was at, on, a, on the doorstep. Uh, second of all, the ministers, the cabinet met and they didn't report to his majesty that there was uh, the starvation going on in one law. So uh, there was a conspiracy for that not to be known. And although, you know, later on he found out, he made changes, uh, his whole cabinet was, was changed, but again, it was too late. The people had already, you know, the, the news media had already, you know, uh, put his name out there as a murderer. So, I, from the point of view from uh, my grandfather, I was there and he was really, you know, unaware of it. Did he have ministers against him who, having been given orders, probably didn't follow through to correct particular problems? Let's say there was a, uh, a bad road in this area. Their responsibility was to get it done. That's, that's was, was that sort of problem? Oh, yes, there was a lot of problem. You see, uh, one of my grandfather's weakness was that he always... Introducing to you now a hot reggae song, No Lies, by artist Mosiah, available on all digital download platform, Apple Music, Spotify, available now, No Lies, by Mosiah, stream now. See you on the next video. I guess not the mindset. Smash that subscribe button. See you on the next video. I guess not the mindset.